This is going to be an extremely important video to take notes on and watch if you ever struggle with generating leads, because that is what it's all about. When you do this right, you can probably generate 100, 200, 500, even a thousand times more leads than you would have without the system. So it's very important that we understand every single part of it. So I have the 1000x leads funnel here and I circled lead magnets because that's what we're going to talk about in this video. A lot of the time you hear the term top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom of funnel. The lead magnets are an example of the middle of funnel. So the top of funnel traffic goes to the lead magnets and they bridge the gap and are like the first contact point in your email subscribers to get to the bottom of the funnel. Of course, we need the traffic at the top and we need to convert them at the bottom. But if you were building a skyscraper or something, you can't build the first 33 floors, skip the second 33 floors and build the top 33 floors. It doesn't work like that. So we have to get these middle of funnel lead magnets here. So let's get into it. What are lead magnets? So top of funnel traffic, like I said, adds content outreach partnerships point towards middle of funnel lead magnets. These are things like master classes, PDFs, checklists, guides, cheat sheets, documents, eBooks. We've probably all downloaded at least one of these before. It's where you go to something like this and you put in your email address for whatever sort of value they are promising for you. So the thing that lead magnets do are they're essentially bribes that you give in exchange for their contact information, typically in paid ads, at least, this will be only the email address because that's just the lowest friction. But when you're promoting your lead magnets with content, typically people inherently trust you more because they've read your content and like you. So they're much more willing to give up their name, phone number, website, etc. But for paid ads, I would recommend only doing the email address. The thing that we want to do or achieve with our lead magnets is we want to make them a complete solution to a narrow problem. And we want them to, we want to use these complete solutions to narrow problems to overcome objections automatically at scale. Built these, you're going to distribute these lead magnets through ads and content to build a list because our email list is directly proportional to revenue. So let's take that back. Let's say we had a bunch of different, let's say we were doing YouTube editing as a service. We could have master classes, PDFs, checklists, guides, cheat sheets, documents, ebooks, etc., to solve the different problems that have to do with a YouTube channel in general. That could be editing, of course, that could be thumbnails, that could be titles, descriptions, scripts, video ideas. So these are all objections that have to like that take that occur when you're starting a YouTube channel. How do I set up my lights and camera? How do I make good titles, thumbnails, SEO? watch time, descriptions, is this even set up right? What do these numbers mean? The analytics, scripts, etc. So these are the narrow problems, if you want to call it that, and that's what we are calling it, that you want to provide solutions for in your lead magnets. Typically, master classes, you get the picture. So you as the expert know a lot more than you probably think you know. Probably don't give yourself enough credit there's going to be a small percentage of people who give themselves too much credit, but that's the 80-20 rule. So you know how to solve all these problems and you want to create a lead magnet to solve every single one of these problems. So you've completely solved every single fear, objection, worry so completely that it just becomes very natural that they hire you. They've solved all your problems. You might as well hire this guy or this girl. This is why creating so many lead magnets is so important and why when you make one, you really are kind of screwing yourself over a bit. If you just make one in this case to set up the camera, the lights and the mic, you might've captured a lead like this. You might've kept generated an email subscriber, but all of these other problems still exist and they're not going to hire you. They're going to wonder, they're not going to be grateful to you or remember your name or hire you. They're going to wonder who can help them with all these other problems. And you know, your competitor is going to do what you should have done and show them how to do it. In addition to that, I would say more lead magnets equals more chances to generate leads. If we think of it like this and go back to this, 
there's always going to be a certain percentage of the market who doesn't struggle with that problem. So if you if you just have this lead magnet, this sole single lead magnet that helps them solve their camera and lighting and microphone problems, there's also, in addition to you not getting any clients, there's going to be a percentage of the market who doesn't need that or doesn't struggle with that. They know how to do it. They don't even have it. They can't afford it. They don't believe it's necessary. And if you only have a lead magnet for that, you're going to miss out on a, a big percentage of the audience. So that is what we kind of mean. The bribe, the, well, the bribe is this stuff. Here's an opt-in page. The lead magnets that completely solve a narrow problem. And then doing this right overcomes objections automatically at scale. So this is an example here of a, a sales call or a conversation where you don't have any lead magnets. You know, we do X, Y, and Z. We do YouTube editing. That sounds like a no-brainer. Everybody, people don't like to tell you the truth or tell you that they don't want your service. They're just going to say, that sounds like a no-brainer. But since you didn't solve all of these objections at scale with your lead magnets, you know, in this situation, objection one, how do I make thumbnails? Number two, my scripts are terrible. Number three, I have no ideas. It's one, it's, hey, you're not going to be able to, or no one's going to hire you to edit their videos if they don't have any videos because they don't have any th um, script ideas or video ideas in general. And that's an example of what's going on here versus when you do this properly, we do X, Y, and Z and it's awesome. We have a, a script lead magnet. We have a idea lead magnet and we have an editing lead magnet and they, so and they say this sounds like a no-brainer this time. It's the same words that they're saying, but it's actually true. They were thinking, you know what you're doing. You finally found the right ones. That's great. And they're going to close the deal. So that is the what of lead magnets. I like to do who, what, when, where, why, how. Of course, who, when, and where are pretty obvious. Who, you, when, now, where, at your desk. So we usually stick to just the other ones. So we went on what and why you need lead magnets. And this is basically the reason. So let's go to how do you actually make these lead magnets? I like to do a formula called the VAR formula. So V stands for value, A stands for actionable, R stands for readable. And even though the lead magnets are almost always gonna be free in terms of value, you have to ask yourself honestly, would I pay $50 for this lead magnet? And maybe you can ask some friends too and hopefully they tell you the truth. People honestly won't say that they would pay $50 for this, it's kind of an indication to you that you have to make it better. Because the thing about this, if your lead magnet's not good, it's not really a situation of they're just going to shrug their shoulders and say, oh well, and move on. They're actually going to hate you. You wasted their time. Even though they didn't pay you anything, they still gave you their name, email, phone number sometimes. They took 20, 30 minutes out of their day to sign up for it and download it. And if they make a hundred dollars an hour, I don't know, that's $50 in, you know, lost time. They're actually going to hate you. It's good. And it's even worse than not having any lead magnet at all, having a bad lead magnet. And if you have a bad lead magnet, even one out of these, you know, in this example, if even one of these is bad, it's going to cause a serious blow to the trust they have for you. So it's kind of a situation of you have to make these lead magnets too good to possibly fail. Give away everything you know. They, nobody actually really wants to do it themselves. They just want to know that you know how to do it. A lot of people have the fear of if they give all, away all the information, you know, why would they hire them? Not true at all. People are busy. This guy's probably a busy business owner in this example. He doesn't want to edit his videos. He just wants to make videos, have someone take care of it, and you... Use these lead magnets to prove that that person is you. Actionable is the second one. And I always recommend putting an exact plan for them to implement within 24 hours. So this is important because even if they don't finish it, you causing behavior change or causing them to take action is a very good authority building thing that will cause them to remember you, trust you, because if they get a couple quick wins, even if it's only in 10 minutes, you know, what you say to do is actually working. And it's just such an important part. If it doesn't matter how valuable it is, if it's just theory and there's no actionable part to it. 
And the last one is readable. So one image and one idea per slide. And if there's a second idea, it's a second slide. So here are my 12 lead magnets that I have for 1,000x leads, just to show you that I actually do this stuff too. I know a lot of people tell people to do stuff that they have never done or don't do themselves. So these are mine. I didn't, I opened a few here. I didn't open all of them just because they're very big file sizes that just cause my computer to be very slow. So here's an example of one of mine where, and I'm showing you the one idea and image per slide thing here. See, you can see one idea, one image per slide. If you're, if you're writing a newsletter or something, or you're not using gamma docs, one headline per idea. So this was just like, there's obviously no slides and stuff. So you just put one headline in, in per idea. So just to break it up, make it a lot more readable and just show you a couple more, just to sh show you that they, this is true. The images do such a great job to make it more readable as well. They're very good to convey complicated concepts that you would have a hard time explaining just through written text, make it easily digestible and understood to even the dumbest people reading it because you don't want to assume everybody has the exact same experience or brain power that you do. So the format that I like to use in all lead magnets is just a five-step format, not too complicated or anything. Part one, introduction. I usually give background on myself, put my face, put a video of myself, put my offer and put like, like the reason I'm making this lead magnet type thing. Part two, what they need to do. Part three, why we, they need to do it. And part four, how they can do it step by step. And then part five examples. And if you notice, that's kind of what we're doing in this video, just to prove that I do this. I have what, why, how, and then we're going to get to examples after. So spoiler alert, but it's a good format that I use for everything. Lead magnet, video, newsletter, whatever and easy to wrap your head around. And it has all the important parts, the who, what, when, where, why, how five W's and an H saying or thing is a thing for a reason. It's all the important information. So you just basically like, if we open a gamma doc here, what I like to do is I'll have like the title slide, of course, lead magnet title. And what I really like to do to start is to do something like this. And you don't have to make it that like blunt, like what you need to do, why you need to do it. You could put some little showmanship on it if you'd like to. How to do it. Part five examples. And then you'd have like, in you could argue in how, like how would be the actionable part, but you could have like conclusion, step by step checklist, which is just like very, um, which is very just direct, like a, ver like a summary type thing. So I always like to, when I'm doing this to, cause you're gonna have obviously maybe quite a few slides, right? So, what I really like to do is break up each part into, you know, maybe you have, let's just put five slides per part. The having like the different colors, and this is just part of making it readable, which is why I'm showing you just like breaks it up very nicely. Like this is what I, what I have on the screen here is just a nice lead magnet format in general. And you can have a lot of bonus points in my view, by going the extra mile and like once this lead magnet is done you've put one headline or one idea one headline one image per slide and you have these parts make like a five minute video for each part and embed it like like right here like you, that's just you going over the part that's just because in addition to that being making it more valuable seeing your face hearing your name knowing what your um, voice sounds like are three of the biggest trust building things just in human nature that have to do with just 
that's basic common sense. If you know someone's name, know what they look like and hear what their voice sounds like, you're much more likely to trust them as if they were just anonymous or whatever. Like, but by Matthew Larson here, that doesn't really, isn't really memorable versus them watching videos of me, them reading all my stuff, them hearing my voice, me saying my name in every video in each part is very, very strong. And you don't have to make it like a 30 minute video. If you have five slides, just go over and kind of treat it like an audio book type thing where you just go through them. It's just very important in my view. So let's go to the next part, which is brainstorming. So there's three things that we need to think about when we're making these lead magnets. Number one, we need to figure out what the objections are. We need to find a desirable way to format the lead magnet, and we need to decide the best way to sell the lead magnet in ads and content. And that's something that I had to learn the hard way when I first started in agency ads marketing is it doesn't really matter. Um, in addition to, you know, I said, it doesn't matter how valuable and actionable it is. If it's not readable, it does not matter how valuable, actionable and readable it is. If the ads don't sell it hard enough and no one downloads it. So <laughs> that's what I mean when I say the, you know, find out a desirable way to format the lead magnet and then the best way to sell it in the ads. So I'm going to do an example here, like I said. So what I'm going to do here is figure out what objections there are at the top row, find out a desirable way to format the lead magnet, and then decide the best way to sell the lead magnet in the ads. And we're going to do this in, in real time so you can see that it is very possible to do. It's not like someone like me took three hours to think of it beforehand. So let's go, because I have experience with landing page service, so I know the objections. So site speed is one. Above the fold design, the offer, the main headline, the hero image, which is the main headline or main image at the very top, general copywriting, so not really the headline, but just the rest, general images, A, B, oops, A, B testing, as well as social proof. So you can argue that these are not the main objections, but this is my video. And this is a real example that I did when I had my last agency. So these are the main objections. I'm going to make this one pink, and this one green, just to signify and match them up down here. So we've found the main objections. So now we have to find a desirable way to format the lead magnet. So for site speed, I might just do a site speed checklist A to Z because I feel like a lot of people do not care about how the back end of Google ranks pages based on all of the factors and page speed insights and stuff like that. So for the average person who would actually become my client, a checklist will do just fine. Similar to this, above the fold checklist plus swipe file of perfect above the folds. I might actually just do the swipe file. Uh, no, I like the checklist too. But the swipe file, like if you could see a, like what would be, let me see if I have any here. So, the above the fold, if you don't know, and just to give context to the lead magnet, that is like the area that you could see based on like, if you click on an ad, it's this, the area that the first part of your page, like that you can see without scrolling. And this is important in the context of landing pages because it's your first impression. And it's also the fact that if you put a heat map on where you can see how far people scroll, like a large percentage of people don't scroll past the above the fold. So you really have to put all the information there. So a checklist of things to include, like, like star rating, headline, hero image, bullet points, button, as well as a swipe file, examples of perfect above the folds would be a good one there. For offer, 
I'd probably do a master class or something. Master class because the offer is too in depth plus swipe file of winning offers. Mass an offer is too in depth to do a checklist or a, a cheat sheet or a doc or a PDF. So I think I would do a master class for something like that. For the main headline, I would probably do a swipe file of winning headlines for them to choose from. Because headline writing is an art and in and of itself. There's too many variables and factors for me to really do a checklist or give a master class or obviously not big enough to write an ebook. So I probably would do a swipe file of winning headlines. For hero image, I would put something like, what would I do here? Yeah, I would do something like top eight things you need to include in your hero image. Actually, that's more of how I would sell that in thing. So I would do a checklist. And that's a preview for what comes later. I would do something like a, you know, a landing page copywriting rule book or something. Something that sounds good and, you know, here's the do's and the don'ts of it a little bit more than just a checklist, but a little bit less than a master class, I would say. Before this, because it's kind of similar, landing page image rule book. And then we're going to see after on basically how to frame these in the ads, because this is sounds like a little bit underwhelming, you know, site speed checklist, but when we set, when we sell it in the ad or in the content, post it's going to sound a lot better so a b testing i would do a setup guide in case they don't have it and then plus 25 winning a b test call it a checklist whatever for them to try i think that's a very good one and then social proof i would do probably like the top five you know checklist of five main ways to include social proof you know you have your star rating you have the ads featured in logos you have testimonials and reviews from clients you might have a celebrity or something or someone famous with name value and then you might have just customer photos so those could be like the five main ways so those are some examples that you know we might do for this Minor, like the examples I have here for a thousand X leads are all basically master classes, just because that is kind of the nature of the offer I'm selling a little bit more knowledge based. So that's the reason I do it like that. So site speed checklist. So let's try to get some sensational headlines, you know, top five things you need to avoid when Top five things that slow down your landing page and ruin its performance, you know, checklist. So if I was, let's go to my Canva here and let's just go to like, let's actually, I wasn't planning on doing this, but let's do it in a sense that we're actually making these ads. So. We do something like this and I like the notepad thing because it's very, it's very easy to get started. There's no design really. It's all copy based. So you can text or you can try a bunch of different ideas at the same time. And I'm not going to do this for every single lead magnet on here, but I will for the biggest one. So I might do something like a headline. These eight things were slowing down my landing page and ruining its performance or something like that. It's always an option because it's how you sell it in the headline that, or in the ad that matters. Checklist of things to avoid. Checklist. The seven things to implement. Checklist of eight things that slow 
down your hmm, eight things things to avoid that slow down I have to think about how I would do this. Seven things you need to implement right now. How site speed affects conversion rate. And then I would do something like this. Make sure your site never gets slowed down again or something like that. People have increased their conversion rate 10 10 to 15 percent by implementing this it's definitely one of the worst misspellings of the word implementing i've ever seen but it is what it is and you'd have to increase conversion rate 10 to 15 percent Cause you want to, in this kind of head, you don't want to just, you want to make it spaced out like this for a reason. This is basically an Apple notes template that, um, need to stop doing. So you do something like this and you might have, you know, five different headlines. Cause you don't really know what's going to be the best way that people responded to it. And so you, these four like bullet points and sign up now actually let's put you know download now instead of sign up now but you'd never really know like what people are going to respond to the best so when i'm first launching a lead magnet like this i typically am going to make five different headlines and i'm just showing you this one time i'm not going to do it for every lead magnet in this video my shopify conversion rate increased 13 percent overnight after downloading this checklist but free in there too if you're gonna make claims like that you probably got to put it in brackets just because it, then it's not really a claim in the same degree let's take this free because we just we want to make it on one line like that or three lines like that just for spacing and readability issues because readability matters here too download this free site speed checklist which increase your conversion rate 10 to 15 percent see what i'm doing here though it's the point is not to say download my site speed checklist it's the result that you're trying to get for them so like you could even take this a bit further and maybe i should have done that is like why like ask yourself why like what do these lead magnets do instead of it's one thing to just say they do x y and z you have a setup guide but why do they do this the purpose of site speed is to increase conversion rate because Slow site speed equals lower conversion rate. Higher site speed equals higher conversion rate. The above the full design is higher conversion rate. The offer <laughs> is higher conversion rate and average order value. You'll notice a theme here because this is the nature of, well, conversion rate optimization and landing pages. Higher conversion rate. I had. So, like, maybe you need to do this as part of it if you're doing this because that will give clarity as to what you should promote in it. Of course, landing pages, the main thing is to do is to increase conversion rate and lower their ad cost because the conversion rate's higher. So, maybe, and this, I should have done this because this is a good idea now. I didn't think of it before is to have a step in here like why like what is the purpose of the lead magnet and then that will give you clarity as to what you need to promote in the ad so lower faster faster site speed equals lower cost customer acquisition cost download this free checklist or something like that and 
you're probably going to strike out with a lot of these headlines and ads at the start. That's why I like the notepad ads, because you can just make tons of different copy variations quickly and then find which ones work and then make a really nicer design ad. But don't think too much about what you're doing here. It's a matter of make it as good as you can, but don't worry too much. My slow site speed was ruining my conversion rate until I found this checklist, something like that. So this is an example of like, I just wanted to show you, I'm not going to do it for all of the examples in this, but I just wanted to show you like, it doesn't matter how valuable it is, how actionable it is, how readable it is. If it sounds lame, it is not focused on a benefit in the ad or content and no one downloads it. So it's a very important part of this process that I wanted to go over. So let's review what we got so far. We have, you know, where the lead magnets come into play, generate more leads, move them further down the funnel, get them on our email list. We've done the what, like what are lead magnets so far and like why you need them, two different scenarios. We've gotten more in depth on why you need them and the process and examples of how it is. We just did some examples and I'm not going to do any more. I just did the example of the ad and you would just make a landing page you don't need to make it crazy. Um, a lot of people will just have crazy long landing pages. Like even this here is not necessary. You can just have a landing page that's basically like this and that's it. Very simple. Just build it on Webflow or ClickFunnels or whatever. And then we've gone over the ads and like why you need to focus on a benefit, which should seem obvious, but tons of ads don't. So now let's wrap it up here because... I have wanting to show you that I actually do this. I've showed you a little bit, but you see the original one, there's only nine lead magnets and that's just to get the point across that you have to make multiple, like nine could be nine, could be six, could be five. However many problems there are, that's how many you are. For a thousand X leads, we have 12 lead magnets and I kind of extended the photo here to show you what I mean because to implement the 1,000x lead system, what are the different problems or parts or steps? There's paid ads, of course, content, there's cold email, there's a newsletter, there's prospecting, there's partnerships, there's conversion mechanisms, which are these. There's standards, because you have to have pretty good standards, habits, that kind of stuff to be able to implement this. There's training for your employees. There's creating all these different offers. There's creating lead magnets up here. And of course, to get it all done, you have to be productive. So these are the main problems that they need to know more information about or systems they need to implement. And that's what my lead magnets for a thousand X leads are. So you see here is the proof, of course, the high level training, the newsletter, the lead magnets, the prospecting strategy, the partnership strategy offers standards and culture, productivity system, cold email, conversion mechanisms, content, and paid ads. So I have a document that houses them all, but if you clicked on all of these links, of course, you'd be taken to the individual ones. I'm not really going to do that because that would probably crash my video just because they're all like huge file sizes because they're so long, but you can take my word for it. So that is why we need to see it. I just have four open and it's almost slowing my computer down. So to go back to the picture, the lead magnets are super important because without the lead magnets, the top of funnel traffic does not become email subscribers. And without becoming email subscribers, we have no way to push them to down funnel. The bigger your email list gets, the more money you're going to make. There's virtually no exceptions to that rule. I'm sure one in every million people don't make more money as their email list grows, but the other 999,999 do. So it's very, very important. And if you're struggling with leads, this is going to be the reason why. When you do this, you're going to get more leads than ever before, of course. And it's really good if people download multiple lead magnets because that's like multiple micro commitments to you. They're going to trust you more. They're spending more time with you, even if that time is reading your lead magnets. And it's also going to capture different parts of the market. For example, like I said before, some people just don't have problems with setting up their camera and mic in that YouTube example. They already did it. Some people might not have a problem with site speed like that we went over in this example with the ad. 
So if we only have one lead magnet, we're missing out on a lot of the market. So make as many lead magnets as you can. Make them good, valuable, actionable, and readable. And you're going to simply get more leads than you ever got before. And that's just the almost no exception to that rule. So I hope this video was valuable and I'll see you in the next one.